Hello, everyone. I'm Orin Nadrich, mindfulness author and columnist at Daily Clout. I'm so excited to be doing my first interview with you today, and I'm really looking forward to speaking with my special guest, Dr. Jeff Barkey. Let me tell you a little bit about Jeff before we get started. Dr. Jeff Barkey is a board-certified primary care physician in private practice for over 25 years. He is the author of COVID-19, a physician's take on the exaggerated fear of coronavirus and a sought after speaker on the failure of government education and all things related to COVID-19. Dr. Barkey is a proud founding member of America's Frontline Doctors and also the co-host of the podcast informeddissentmedia.com. Welcome, Jeff. Or it's great to be with you. I appreciate you having me on. I am thrilled to have you on and to just jump right into our conversation. So here's where I want to start. I want to start with, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about when we first met. And it was at the beginning of the craziness that had erupted around the pandemic. And everybody was in this heightened state of fear. And I said to myself, I, I need to I need to connect with a doctor that's on the right side of history. And I found you. And it was a wonderful encounter to really engender faith in me that there were doctors that were on this side of the narrative, if you will. So I remember you telling me that you were once I guess you could call it a traditional doctor, if you will. And if I'm not mistaken, I want you to talk more about this to our audience, that it was when you heard Bobby Kennedy Jr. speak, I believe, at an event that was, uh, I think, covering vaccine injuries that you sort of had a aha moment. And yeah, you know, that, tell, me, tell me about that. that. I mean, that's right. Listen, I was trained in an MD medical school. I went to medical school at the University of California, Irvine. And, you know, I was taught what most doctors learned. And it was really during the COVID period that I started to question a lot of things. And it really started, I was invited by Pastor Tim Thompson to come hear Bobby Kennedy Jr. speak. And I knew of him. I used to have this perception of him as being this, you know, crazy anti-vax guy. And it's like, whatever. And he just sort of discounted him. And Tim Thompson, Pastor Tim, is a guy I respect and I've known for many years. So it was curious to me that he would invite somebody like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. out to his church to speak. And he invited me to come along. And so I figured, okay, well, that's kind of weird. I want to hear what this guy has to say. And we were in the green room before uh, Bobby Kennedy spoke. And I happened to be face to face with him. He's pretty tall. He's like six one, six two, or something. And he's a Kennedy, so you can't help but just be a little bit starstruck who with who the man is. And, and I was, and he kind of looks like his father a little bit, and so forth. Anyway, so I'm standing face to face with him. We had maybe three minutes one on one. I've got a name tag on, and so forth. And I introduced myself, you know, so Mr. Kennedy, I said, I'm really curious what your message is. I can't quite figure out if you're just a crazy anti-vaxxer or there's more to your message. I literally said that. It's like, <laughs> what, what a jerk, you know, what kind of an idiot says that to him, right? Well, I'm sure That's you're not the first, I'm sure you're not the first one that said that to him, by the way. And he looked down at my name tag and he said, well, Dr. Barkey, you know, um, I hope after you listen to me speak that you'll believe what I believe and you'll have a, a bit of a change of heart. And I did. So after, after hearing him speak, it really made me question everything, especially about the vaccine industry that we were taught in medical school. All these vaccines are safe and effective. There's no correlation with autism or anything else. Everybody and their mother should get these vaccines. And Kennedy is a very good speaker and he, and he talks with a lot of facts. And, you know, I'll, I'll make this up, but the, but the numbers are approximately accurate. And he said, you know, prior to about 1986, we used to give kids something like 10 vaccines, right? 10, 10 individual shots. And since the act in 1986 that Ronald Reagan signed into law that gives vaccine companies 
immunity from liability. Ever since then, the number of vaccines we've given the kids have escalated dramatically. We're now, by the time a kid gets to be about 18 years old, he's gotten something like 70 individual injections, vaccinations. And you go, wow, how did we get there? And how is it possible that a vaccine company is immune from all liability? If you're immune from liability, what incentive do you have to make a vaccine that's safe and effective? You know, just your, your goodwill, that you're a nice person, that you, you know, want good for humanity. I mean, we don't give that to any other industry. I mean, you know, and imagine me as a doctor that patients aren't allowed to sue doctors, so we don't need malpractice. And then the government mandates that you must come see me. That's kind of the way it is in the vaccine industry. We mandate that kids must get vaccines in order to attend school. The only loopholes homeschooling in California, that is. And the companies that are administering these vaccines are immune from all liability. It just doesn't make sense. No. And Bobby pointed out that almost none of these vaccines have been placebo controlled tested for safety. And during the whole COVID uh, shenanigans, as we rolled out this COVID vaccine, that many of us questions, uh, questioned, and initially I thought, well, you know, listen, around the margins, maybe it helps people uh, not get as ill as they would if they weren't vaccinated, and perhaps high-risk people ought to be vaccinated. That, that's, what I, that's what I believed when the vaccine first came out. And then as I did research and I learned, and I had vaccine-injured patients roll into my practice, um, and I continued to follow the science, I realized, no, the, these products are not safe. They're not effective. They don't prevent in, they don't prevent illness. They don't prevent transmission. When Pfizer first came out with their vaccine, they promised us that it was something like 98% effective at preventing the disease and preventing transmission. That was a lie. Blatant. Blatant. Now, no, it, it Blatant. doesn't prevent the disease. It doesn't prevent transmission. And there's signals coming out everywhere about injury. And there's now even studies out of Israel and elsewhere that show the most highly vaccinated people are at the greatest risk of getting COVID and ultimately dying from that disease. And I, I just, I, I'm not anti-vax, but I just can't recommend this product anymore based on what I know, what I've seen and reading and studying the science. Why do you have to be called an anti-vaxxer to, to believe that in fact, these vaccines can be harmful and possibly kill you. The label anti-vaxxing is so misleading and it has taken on this sort of propaganda, you know, uh, proportions that's, that's really gripped an entire world. Well, it's the way, it's the way many on the left roll. If they don't like what you're saying, rather than um, have a discussion about the facts, they just call you names. And this is not unique to the vaccine industry. So if I'm skeptical about vaccines, and in particular, the COVID vaccine, I'm anti-vax. If I think affirmative action is a terrible idea, I'm a racist. And if I think we ought to um, uh, take care of our environment, but do so in a way that is economically sound, you know, I'm an, I'm an anti-environmentalist or whatever. So they call us names when we disagree with them rather than argue on the facts. And, you know, I've, I've gotten to know Bobby Kennedy over the last couple of years. I've attended multiple events with him. Um, he's one of the brightest guys, fact-based guys, but he's banned from social media. He refuses, or rather people refuse to debate him. He's offered enormous amounts of money for anybody on the opposite side to debate him. Um, listen, he's a dyed in the blue Democrat his whole life, his whole family. The guy's a Dem, but he's, yes. Yes, he's he a... Is. He's a traditional liberal, not a leftist. He no. believes in freedom. He, his expression, I've used this. We we need to, uh, what is it? We need to- um, We need to value our freedoms more- More than, than we fear we the fear virus. Death. We yeah, fear and that's death. what's happened. We've, we're I having our constitutional quote. rights taken away yeah. uh, under the guise of, of medical health. And and, and the, narrative, the narrative is false. So it's been very frustrating for me. And, and it makes you question not just- the COVID vax, but then you start scratching your head and you think, well, what about the other vaccines? Are they safe and effective or are they being manipulated and marketed in the same way? So if you go into any pharmacy right now, pick your pharmacy, Savon, CVS, Walgreens, whatever, 
they have these big posters up there, for example, with shingles. And they'll have a poster of some person with his gnarly shingles rash on their face. And it'll say, don't be this guy, get your shingles vaccine. That that shouldn't be allowed. That's not informed consent. Oh. That's that's big pharma marketing. Oh, Jeff, you're already going to get me all fired up here. You know, it is, this is still going on all the while that, even the health organizations that deceived us are telling us that this vaccine does not stop you from getting COVID or transmitting COVID, and yet it's still being pushed. It's and pushed crazy. to our children. It, it, exactly, and and I want to you know I want to talk about that you know children which are the least likely what to really get seriously ill and or die from COVID. It is unconscionable. And I want to circle back to you as a doctor, you know, how could any doctor in good conscience be willing to give this shot, knowing what we know, whether they want to admit it or not? Okay, there's too much information out there already. You know, of course, it's not on mainstream media, but it will be eventually, I believe it has to be because of the injuries and the deaths are insurmountable. It's 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 un, I mean, it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Right. So how could a doctor in good conscience give this to a pregnant woman, give this to a baby? I don't it's it's mind boggling. I, you know, I think it I mean, I, I want to believe it's just out of ignorance. They actually don't know what we know. They don't they don't read and listen to the same news that we listen to. They don't actually read the scientific studies. They simply listen to the healthcare bureaucrats like previously Dr. Fauci and others who simply echo the government narrative that these products are safe and effective and we should vaccinate anybody. And, you know, you talk about children. It's it's not my opinion that children are at low risk. It's the science. And I would encourage anybody who's listening to do their own research. And you can just Google this um, COVID deaths by age CDC and the numbers will come up, the government numbers. It's something like 12 or 1500 less than 18 year olds that have died throughout the pandemic now about three years. And if you do the math, the number of people in the United States that are less than 18 years old, the, there's so many zeros after the decimal point that it rounds to zero, meaning there is a 0% risk of a child less than 18 years old dying of COVID. And the only people that are less than 18 that actually die of COVID are those that have significant comorbidities. Those are kids with childhood cancer or diabetes or other significant um, illnesses. Even the CDC acknowledges that there hasn't been a healthy child that has died of COVID, yet these vaccines are being marketed to children under the emergency use authorization. Oh, Jeff, it, Jeff, that's criminal. You will never hear that on your local news. Ever. No, you won't. And as a reminder to your listeners, emergency use authorization exactly. requires two things. It requires that there actually be an emergency. And especially with children, there is no emergency. Children are not dying of COVID. So I don't know how you could even, you know, look somebody in the eye and say there's a childhood COVID emergency. And the second under emergency use authorization is there has to be no effective alternative treatment. And that's just simply false. We have hundreds and hundreds of studies that show both hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, and sequence multi-drug treatment protocols are effective. So I agree with you, Aura. I think it's criminal that we're allowing children to be vaccinated uh, with this product, and we shouldn't even be calling it a vaccine. Jeff, what do you think medical freedom means today? I mean, do we do we really have it? Well, you know, we don't in California, that's for sure. You know, the doctors are being muzzled really in California. You know, in Florida, we have it. We have a great surgeon general in Florida that came from UCLA that was ostracized there because he spoke out. And right. that's uh, Dr. Joe Latipo. Um, and we, you know, we have some degree of medical freedom in, in Texas as well, Arizona, some of the other red states. But in California, we really don't have it. We have a medical board that's made up of attorneys. Now, think about this for a minute. Imagine that the State Bar Association, the California Bar Association, that's the organization that oversees uh, lawyers. Imagine that the California Bar Association had as its president a doctor. The attorneys would say, what, what are you crazy? What, what are you talking about? A doctor as the president of the Bar Association. But we have a lawyer who's the president of the Medical Board of California, a lawyer, not a doctor, but a lawyer. So it's this lawyer, along with some of the other lawyers on the medical board, 
that are so-called determining this standard of care and whatever misinformation and disinformation is, we don't have medical freedom here. Now we'll get closer to it when ultimately Assembly Bill 2098 is um, struck down. That will send a message that you can't uh, stop a physician from it, their First Amendment right of speaking right. what they believe to be their truth to their patient and rendering an opinion, first or second opinion, uh, to their patients, and that that will be a step in the right direction. But it's a it's a scary time to practice medicine when it's easier to prescribe oxycontin than it is hydroxychloroquine. Exactly, that's a really scary state of affairs it when is. a pharmacist has the right to deny dispensing a safe and effective medication uh, to patients. That's a scary time. Um, let me ask you also, um, how do you see sort of medical care as an America, one of America's frontline doctors, which I want you to tell our listeners a little bit more about because they might not know about it, but how do you see medical care across the board from you know having our private physicians to hospital care in the future? What, what, is, what is that gonna look like? Yeah. So right now, unfortunately, you know, it used to be that it would be rare that a physician was employed by a hospital or medical system. Most doctors were in private practice. Only a tiny percentage of them worked for hospitals and big medical groups. The opposite is now the truth. Most doctors now are employed by large medical groups and hospital groups, and only a small percentage of us are now in private practice. So there are some really perverse incentives now that are going on. If you if you go to a doctor that's employed by a medical group, a big hospital group, and you need an x-ray, a laboratory, um, a referral to a specialist, they can only refer internally to the group that employs them. And that's not what's best for the patient. I'm not employed by anybody. I'm employed by my patients. So my goal is to provide them with the best possible care that I think that's best for them. And that may be a specialist that's in a local medical group or not. It may be an independent specialist. It could be a radiology facility that works independently. It could be a pharmacy that's independent. I just want what's best for my patient. They are paying me for my best advice. So there are some perverse incentives that have occurred. And this is true all the way down to medical schools that are bought and paid for too often by big pharma. Right. You go into any medical school on any particular day, and there's going to be a lunch that's sponsored by some pharmaceutical company where the students and residents are captured for an hour or so, uh, paid for by food so they can listen to their propaganda. Um, we're the only country other than um, uh, uh, New Zealand that allows pharmaceutical companies to direct to consumer advertise. So when you watch coming up in a couple of weeks, the Super Bowl, I guarantee there'll be an ad from Pfizer or Moderna oh, yeah. or one of those companies <laughs> or the evening news sponsored by Pfizer. Brought to you by Pfizer. It's like the and, mantra. You and know? I think that's just wrong, you know, because it, it corrupts the news. Speaking of Pfizer... <laughs> What do you think of, you know, you, you probably know of it, but anybody who doesn't, you know, isn't on other media outlets probably doesn't. If they're just watching their local news, they would not know anything about, you know, James O'Keefe, the investigative uh, journalist for Project Veritas and the bomb drop by the Pfizer executive that um, James O'Keefe exposed on his platform. And I mean, this guy said some of the things that he, that he did that were so crazy, like, Pfizer mutating the COVID virus to keep fueling its cash cow and something called directed evolution. That's all we need. Now, a new thing to come into the lexicon that sounds like, like something out of a, a science fiction horror movie. Um, what do you think about that? Did you see the video of that? And what, what I did, I watched it. I watched that? it multiple. I watched it multiple times from bro both Project Veritas and, and uh, Tucker Carlson had a whole um, uh, expose on that. And uh, it's frightening. I think it's true. I think it's going on in many of these pharmaceutical companies. You have to remember Pfizer is a multinational company. Doesn't yeah. mean they're doing these, this research here in the United States. It could be anywhere. And it's the exact same research that unfortunately taxpayers in the in America were funding under, the, under Dr. Fauci uh, in the Wuhan Chinese Communist Party laboratory. So gain of function, you know, we hear this name, it's been thrown around. Most people now understand it. It basically has to do that you're taking a virus and you're purposely mutating it in order to make it more infectious and contagious in order to then create a solution, a vaccine or a therapeutic. You know, on paper, you sort of say, okay, well, I get it. 
you're worried that these vaccines will mutate in nature. So if you can force some of that mutation and then experiment with therapeutics so we can be prepared when they actually mutate, on paper, you sort of go, okay, I sort of see where that makes some sense. The problem is, is it's very, very dangerous. We created the Chinese, the Communist Party in China created a mutated strain of a coronavirus that we now know has become known as SARS-CoV-2. And the only question was, did the Communist Party release this on purpose or was it accidentally released? That's why, by the way, we're seeing all these weird symptoms that we never see with any other illnesses like loss of smell and taste that can last a whole long time, resistance to some of the traditional therapeutics, long COVID, for example. I mean, do you ever hear of long flu? No. no. Do, you ever, do, you ever, do you ever hear of like long cold symptoms? No. But this virus is so weird, man-made, that it's causing these unusual symptoms. And then the worst part is, think about this. For the first time in the history of humans, we have asked the genetic machinery of our body to create a non-human protein. We're asking our genetic machinery of our body with this so-called vaccine to force our body to create a non-human protein the spike protein. Right. The spike right. protein is a non-human body and we're training our body's machinery, protein manufacturing machinery to create a non-human protein. We've never done that before. What what the heck are we thinking about? What could possibly go wrong? And <laughs> then we convince the people of the world that this thing is safe and effective, prevents the disease and prevents transmission, which we now know is not true. Now, millions and millions and millions of people have got this vaccine. We're seeing young athletes drop dead suddenly and we're pretending like it's normal. And How now we're you, seeing injury. Jeff, 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 you you know, I recently had an event at my home that you were at for Children's Health Defense, again, which you and I are both on the board. and. Yep. Bobby was there and um, so was Edward Dowd, okay? And uh, you know Ed, he worked on Wall Street and at BlackRock as a portfolio manager and his new book, Cause Unknown, The Epidemic of Sudden Death has blown the lid off any doubt that these experimental vaccines are causing an alarming and unprecedented amount of deaths. Again, like you just said, especially in young athletes. I mean, every day when I'm on social media, one more person, young person is dropped dead or one person has gone to bed with an ache, which seems to me like a blood clot in their leg and they don't wake up the next morning, okay? And the media, mainstream media refuses to acknowledge the vaccines as a cause of these deaths. When do you think this is really, for me, a, a very important question. Not that I'm expecting you to have the answer, like, you know, you've got a crystal ball, but when do you think that the tipping point will happen? Will in it, when it will be impossible to deny that the cause of these so-called sudden deaths without question are from the vaccines? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. There's so much misinformation and so much propaganda out there. And these vaccine companies are so invested. There's been something like, 25 new billionaires in the vaccine industry directly as a result of COVID. You know, Ed Dowd is a man of the left. He's not some crazy right wing conservative. He's a man of the left and he's really bright and he's really rich. And he's an analyst. He worked in a Wall Street, BlackRock, whatever. He made tons of money. And he just started analyzing the data and scratching his head and saying, wait, what? Well, this makes no sense at all. And he dug further and further and further and just starts uncovering the corruption of the whole medical field. And now he writes about it and he speaks about it. And of course, you know, now people hate him because he's speaking the truth. And there's other people like that, like Steve Kirsch, also a man of the left. He's the guy that invented the optical mouse on your uh, on your laptop or, you know, whatever. Um, and he, he's a Silicon guy, Silicon Valley guy, super wealthy, wealthy dude. And he, you know, if you Google uh, COVID misinformation super spreader, he's like on the top 10 list. Um, and because he's telling the truth, he's also just a really bright analyst. And he started analyzing the data and started, you know, saying this, this vaccine, it doesn't make any sense. It's not safe and effective. And it's literally killing people. I don't know when the tipping point is going to be. I don't well, know. You know, will it take something like what happened with thalidomide? Let's just say that. Okay. So a drug that was given to pregnant women in the fifties and early sixties and was marketed as a treatment for morning sickness. 
when the range of disabilities in babies and the deformity, like absence of limbs and body parts became so great, it could no longer be denied that the cause of those deformities were in fact thalidomide. Yeah, I mean, but Aura, we're past that point. We're past that point. We see athletes dying. We see injuries everywhere. Uh, the media is still denying it and not reporting on it. We've well, got Project Veritas that Pfizer admits that they're doing gain of function research. I'm sure other pharmaceutical companies are doing that. I don't know. The American people have to rise up. They're protesting over vaccine mandates all over the world, but apparently not here. People are still, there are businesses that still and schools and universities that are still requiring our children to be vaccinated in order to attend. And it's, it's criminal. It's so, so thank criminal. God there are organizations like Children's Health Defense that are fighting this. Uh, the American Academy of Physicians and Surgeons, a medical organization that's fighting this. America's Frontline Doctors, led by Simone Gold, she's fighting this and actually trying to create a parallel healthcare system that is um, absent of any government finance, insurance, and et cetera. So people have direct primary care and no insurance or no government involvement. So, okay, so all of us working that together. Model, that model will be sort of the wave of the future, if you will, that enough doctors will get on board for this and create their own medical systems, if you will. I hope so. I hope so. Owned. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, Gold Care and Simone Gold, her yeah. idea is to have a nationwide telemedicine service. Um, underneath that would be brick and mortar uh, physician offices in every state. So if somebody physically has to be seen, they have a place to go. And then overlying that are medical centers. So, I mean, listen, people need knee replacement surgery, gallbladder surgery, colonoscopies, various procedures. And we need to have places that uh, patients feel safe that they can go to, that don't require a vaccination or a mask, where they feel like they get an actual opinion that isn't influenced by perverse financial incentives. So that's the idea at some point that needs to happen, where we have hospitals that don't accept insurance or government money, where we have physicians that are paid directly by the patient, not by insurance companies. And then and only then can we start to regain the trust of the medical system that has been so uh, unfortunately corrupted by financial, perverse financial interests. Yeah, it's really too bad. People are are so distrustful of the medical system, which then spills over into doctors. And, you know, everything really is now not trusted in anything to do with the medical field, which yeah, is absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm asked all the time, well, how about you, Barky? Can we come see you? You know, you sound like a you sound like a good guy. You know, unfortunately, my my practice during COVID exploded. I had you know, so many people reaching out that wanted a like-minded physician that ultimately I had to close my practice to new patients. I just can't take any more patients, unfortunately. Um, you know, folks that want to follow me and ask me questions or see what I do, uh, I've, you know, got a pretty large presence on social media, on Instagram, rx4liberty, right. rx4forliberty, yes. same website. And, um, you know, so I'm trying to reach out and involve as many people as I can in the health freedom movement and really teaching patients, teaching people how to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. You don't need doctors and big institutions. You just need to learn, relearn how yeah. to take care of yourself, how to eat healthfully, how to say no to some of these processed foods that are filled with inflammatory products that pharma loves because, you know, we get sick and then we need their, their products. Exactly. It starts with taking care of yourself, growing your own food, if you can, et cetera, and distancing yourself from this attachment uh, with perverse financial incentives to the medical community. Exactly. And to really seek out, I mean, I've always been very holistic in my approach to health anyway. I remember one time years ago mentioning, I think, chamomile tea to my doctor, and he thought I was out there, you know, as a type of tea to to, to have a you know, calming effect, you know, because I, sure. I was into this stuff long ago, you know, became right. before it became more mainstream and things like integrative medicine and holistic approaches. I mean, you know, allopathic medicine has a lot of great positive things about it. Do you know? Yes. But we oh, for sure. But we have to really bring in other modalities of health and healing other than just the model that, you know, perhaps you learned in medical school. 
end up having to unlearn. Unfortunately, it's a disease state model, meaning that there isn't a symptom or an illness where we don't have a pharmaceutical prescription cure for it. And that's the wrong model. I still too often have patients that will come in, they woke up with a sore throat and they want a Z pack. Um, they hurt their knee and they want to get an MRI. You know, I'm trying to retrain my patients wow. to allow their God given immune system to heal themselves. And nine out of 10 times that will happen. If you support your immune system, if you get outside, get a little sunshine, some fresh air, drink plenty of purified, not tap water, eat right. organic produce and right. grass fed beef and so forth. We got to learn how to take care of ourselves um, so we can support our immune system to not get illness and not require prescriptions and procedures and so forth. And Jeff, we do know that for two and a half years, you know, during this nightmare situation that we were all at the effect of, never once did we hear a doctor other than Dr. Fauci. Did we ever hear anybody uh, encourage us to do any of the things that you just said? Did any did did, did no. he ever talk about did he ever talk about vitamin D? Did he ever talk about zinc? Did he ever talk about glutathione? Did he ever talk about anything? The, of what you're speaking of. No, you're right, Aura. And unfortunately, you know, forget about hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin for a minute. Pretend like they don't even exist. There are so many things that somebody can do to protect themselves and to um, overcome COVID that have nothing to do with these products. If you simply made sure that your vitamin D level was in the upper limits of normal, you'd be better off. Fauci never told us that. There's a direct correlation between low vitamin D and bad outcome in COVID. If you just simply rinsed out your nose and throat with dilute hydro hydrogen peroxide or saline or um, providone iodine, you could reduce symptoms and duration and, and reduce the risk of COVID. Nobody ever tells us that. And you're right, zinc and quercetin and other um, uh, supplements, vitamin C and the like, if we did that and spread the message of that, people would be better off regardless of how you feel about hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin. Absolutely. But the legacy media simply is silent on all those issues. Why? Bought and paid for by big pharma. Exactly. It circles all back to the notorious big pharma. And, you know, I, I really have to say that um, hopefully what we're speaking about today it seems to me, I mean, I'm a perennial optimist that I feel that more and more people having just written a book called Time to Awaken, I yes. hope more and more people wake up. I'm hearing that there are a lot of people, including those that have been vaccinated, you know, they talked about vaccine hesitancy against those that chose, you know, um, bodily autonomy and the the term right to choose. It wasn't appropriate for that, but it's it's OK for pro-life or pro-choice. And they're saying, I don't want to get another shot. I'm hearing more people say they have more information. They're not in a heightened state of fear like everybody was in. And what I say in my book, you should never make an important decision about your health when you're in a heightened state of fear. 100%. And, and also, we were never made to feel that we are healthy human beings. And I love the way you're describing how to really, you know, come from a place of that we are healthy and we have a strong immune system and there are a lot of things we can do to keep ourselves healthy this is not spoken about this is not taught to us and i think now is the time that we can really do a paradigm shift and you I agree. Jeff, as a doctor who is really um offering this up to your patients today it gives me hope that there are more doctors like you obviously there's there's many that are part of America's frontline doctors that have the same type of integrity that you have that want to practice medicine in this way. And I'm hopeful that more and more doctors will take that stand. I you hope know? so. I mean, you know, listen, I don't know a single patient who is unvaccinated that regrets not being vaccinated, but I know many patients that have been vaccinated that regret putting that vaccine in their body and that they won't get any further uh, boosters. There's a uh, a, a recent patient, she's a nurse at Kaiser. Uh, she was forced to get two Moderna uh, vaccines in order to keep her job. Ever since she completed that series, she has not felt well with basically all her body systems. And we're working to try to figure out how to detoxify her and try to get her healthy. There are so many stories like that. Oh, yes, there uh, are. There are. A, a, a holistic approach to medicine is what I always lead with. That's what I preach on rx for liberty on my website and instagram uh, i hope your listeners follow me on there and look for opportunities to take really good care of themselves and ultimately so they don't need the help of the medical community 
Yeah, wonderful, Jeff. So let me ask you just a few closing questions. How do you stay hopeful as a doctor, <laughs> <laughs> as a doctor who is facing all of these unprecedented challenges that doctors like yourself are facing today? I think my patients help me stay hopeful. Uh, they come in and they want my advice and they feel comforted by having a physician that believes what they believe and can support their effort and not make them feel bad and put masks on and push them to get vaccines. And I see more and more doctors now um, coming to that, I think, decision. Um, you know, so I feel hopeful from that standpoint. There's always an escape route. Like I said, I've got a, I've got a medical license in Texas. I hope I'm not forced to move. Um, and I see things slowly, slowly changing as you and I fight with Children's Health Defense and other organizations. I think we're making progress. We're slowly winning in the courts. Uh, this Assembly Bill 2098, I think, will be overturned soon. So I, I think the activism is working and more and more people are being skeptical and hesitant to listen to the narrative that this vaccine is somehow necessary for their existence. Wonderful. And and tell us, Jeff, what are your plans this year? You know, <laughs> new year, new year. You don't have to give us the whole yearly plan ahead, but to help stop these crimes against humanity. And do you think we will see those who were complicit in these crimes be held accountable? I hope so. You know, with the new Congress taking over, we'll see some investigations into what went on with uh, COVID-19 and specifically Anthony Fauci. Um, you know, my plans for the new year are first take care of myself so I can be in a better position to take care of my patients and to continue to fight on behalf of uh, medical freedom in this country. Wonderful. Jeff, thank you so much for being my guest today and tell people how they can find you. I think you or it's been it's been an honor and thank you so much. The best way is on Instagram, Rx4, for spelled F-O-R, Rx for Liberty. My website is the same name and you can follow me and message me. I always respond to emails and messages that come through my uh, my social media sites. Thank you again, Jeff, for being with me today. And thank you so much for our listeners and our viewers for watching. And be sure to subscribe to Daily Clout so you don't miss any of our new content. Thanks again for being here with us today. Mm -hmm.